breakfast time, snack time, or even dessert. How about a really tasty muffin that has no flour, no processed sugar, good fats, high protein, fits paleo. Yes, we're going to make some, and at the end I'm going to give you a whole lot of options. Hi, I'm Cheryl Townsley, naturopath, wisdom coach, but you know what? Just like you, I spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen. Well, actually, I don't spend a whole lot of time because I'm totally into... That was easy. Easy, and things I can make, freeze, and have available for days in the future when I don't feel like spending any time in the kitchen. So today are muffins, brand new recipe, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. And so in the comments below on the Cheryl Townsley page, I'll have the recipe, I'll give you some of the options, so all you have to do is go to the comments and print it out, because if I try to put it all on here, much too complicated. So these are like a coffee cake breakfast muffin. Now I remember when I used to get these great big muffins at the muffin top and lots and lots of streusel. Oh, they were yummy but they sure didn't look good on me after I had eaten it. So this one is so much simpler and so much healthier. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a topping. Now the topping has nuts in it, but towards the end of this little video, I'm gonna give you options so you can be nut free, that you can do things if you don't like coconut. I'm gonna give you the options a little bit later. So these nuts, I usually toast before I chop them up because it just brings more flavor. So this is a cup of nuts that have been toasted and chopped. And then we're going to add some protein powder, um, about two tablespoons. Now here's the thing with protein powder. I have yet to find one protein powder that everybody likes that meets all of their requirements, so that is going to be up to you to find. This one has a little bit of sweetener, so if you use something that has no sweetener, add a little bit of sweetener in this and in the muffin. So that was two tablespoons. This is the one we keep in bulk because I like the kitchen to look nice. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of unsweetened shredded coconut. Now remember, at the end, I'm going to give you some options. So there's our nuts, our protein powder, our coconut. We're going to add just a little bit of cinnamon. And then I'm going to add some melted coconut oil. Now, of course, you could use butter. You could use lots of different oils, avocado oil. Now, you know, if you're going to make a healthy, healthy muffin, why in the world did you put your coconut oil in the microwave? No, 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 you don't want to do that. So we're going to take some coconut oil that's been melted on top of the stove the old-fashioned way, and we're going to put in about a quarter of a cup. Now, I will say that once you've been cooking for a long time, you can pretty much eyeball it, because I'm also into as few dishes as possible. So there's our streusel topping. Nuts, coconut, protein, cinnamon, and a little bit of oil. That looks almost yummy enough to eat, but we're going to wait and put that on top of our muffin. So the next thing we're going to do is make our muffin. So the first thing we're going to do is mix all of our liquid ingredients, and I do it in the same container that I measure so that I have fewer dishes. So I have put four eggs, and today that's right at a cup. And to that, I'm going to add a half a cup of coconut milk. Of course, I'm going to use the same container I already did for the oil. And of course, you could use almond milk. You could use any of your other milks. Put it in there. And we want to start beating up the eggs and the milk. And we're going to add some additional coconut oil, another quarter of a cup. So we can do it in here because we've already gotten it dirty. Yep, that was a good guess. I always just guess just right of what I'm going to put in the pan. It amazes me how good I have gotten at that. Just practice. It's fun to learn that you can judge how much needs to go into something. So we've got our oil, we've got our eggs, and we need just a little bit of vanilla. Now at home when I'm cooking, I don't do all of this. In fact, I don't even put out a pull out a measuring spoon when I'm doing vanilla. I just put it in the lid. Most lids are about a teaspoon, so half a teaspoon, half a lid. Another way to avoid getting dishes dirty. So there's my liquid ingredients. Do you have to do that? You don't have to, but it is better to mix your dry and then add the liquid. So now we have our almond flour. Remember, options at the end. And then we're going to add some sweetener, sweetener of your choice. 
And we're going to add a quarter cup of your protein powder. Right at a quarter cup. And what else do I have in there? Quarter cup of sweetener protein powder and the salt I already had in the flour. So now we're just going to mix our dry ingredients so that that all gets mixed in well together. And then we're just going to stir in those liquid ingredients. How could this be any easier? You didn't even need a mixer. You just need a little bit of arm power to mix this all together. And as it sets for a little bit, it'll thicken. And it's going to be different when I share with you how to do this with coconut flour. And we're going to look at the results for both of them. So we now have it all mixed up. Now, a couple of little tricks to put it in the cupcake wrappers. So I use my muffin tin. I have it filled with, I like to get the healthier papers that you can get at a health food store that haven't been processed and dyed. Fits right in there. And I also like to use, this is I think a medium to large ice cream scoop. It's exactly the right amount and I don't fill it quite full because I want to save room to put my topping. So if I was making cupcakes, I would fill the muffin, this ice cream scoop, all the way to the top. But since I want to load this up with some topping, I only put about half in. So we're going to assume I've done all of them. And then I take um, a teaspoon and start loading on the streusel topping. Now, what I do is I put what I think is going to be right, and then if I have extra, I go fill in the others. So what did that take? Just a few minutes, four or five minutes, to make these amazing muffins. Now, when you put them in the oven, 350 degrees, it's going to be somewhere between 15 to 17 minutes. Don't overbake them, but you also don't want them mushy. So I use a toothpick, and you want just a tiny any bit of crumb come off, but you certainly don't want it doughy. And if it's completely clean, you probably will have overbaked them. Now, let's take a look at the finished product because that's what we want to eat. So today, we're going to look at two different options. These were made with almond flour and these were made with coconut flour. So it's even easy to remember because coconut flour will release the paper much more easily. So I want you to see the difference between the two when you open them up. So here's our almond flour. Does not look delicious. And it's just as good hot as it is the next day cold and they freeze beautifully. So we're going to break it in half. And you can see that this is what it looks like. It's got some little bit of airy crumbs in there that allows you to see that it raises a little bit differently than the coconut flour. Now, the coconut flour is a little bit eggier and a little bit drier because it's got more eggs, and that's what you have to do when you use coconut flour. So there's a little bit of difference, a little bit of taste, but you know what? They're both really good, and they're both significantly better, of course, when you add just a little bit of grass-fed butter. Oh, wait, I've got to talk for a little bit. I shall wait. <laughs> so let's put that aside. So we've had almond flour and coconut flour. Now, in the notes, I'm going to give you exactly what I did to make the coconut flour. And when you're experimenting with recipes, because I get this question quite a bit from clients, I get it from people on Facebook, what do I do about this and what do I do about that? When you're beginning to learn how to adjust recipes, start with one thing at a time. Because if you had just four, or five, six things and it didn't work, you have no idea why. I was helping our daughter with this recently and she had made lots of changes. And I said, Anna, I don't know which one did it. Now, over the years, after all the cookbooks I've written, having been a home economics teacher, having done cooking shows on television, I really have a pretty good eye for recipes. I've read thousands of cookbooks like most people read novels. So I can pretty much look at a recipe and taste it just by reading it. And you can develop that skill as you learn to play in the kitchen. It's not about right, wrong. It's about discovering how to enjoy food. So I'm going to go through the recipe and give you some options of things that you could experiment with. Pick just one or two. Don't try them all at once. So 
Um, eggs, most people are okay with eggs. If not, there's lots of options with flaxseed, arrowroot, but I'm not going to get into that. Almond milk, you could easily use coconut milk, rice milk, cashew milk, hemp milk, lots of options. Regular milk? You could even use regular milk if you can use that, or goat milk. Um, coconut oil. I really like coconut oil. I also like to melt grass-fed butter or avocado oil, or sometimes I use the flavored um, olive oils that we keep on hand because there's some really tasty ones. Like you can use some of the maple flavored oils. You could even add a little bit of the maple different um, vinegars in there for just a little bit of tang. We have a whole display of those because we use them and our clients love to sample them. So instead of almond flour, the second batch I made with all coconut flour and the proportions will be in the comments. Um, sweeteners. You know in Chocolate and everything else, I did an entire section on sweeteners. So you can begin to play with those and find the ones that you like. In our inflammation group, what I found that's totally shocked me, and some of you are going to go, no, 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 can't be true, can't be true. But after testing lots and lots of people, may not be true for you, happened to be true for me. Coconut sugar would always trigger cravings, and it would always put on weight. For me, organic brown sugar actually worked better. So learn to discover what your body likes. And if you use a sweetener and you go eat something and you want six of them, probably not the sweetener for you. Because when you use the sweetener and the good fats that your body likes, you don't have the, the cravings triggered. So you're going to do a sweetener. Protein powder we already talked about. I'm using one that has a little bit of sweetener. And no, I'm not going to tell you which one I use because then we would have so many discussions on what's right and wrong. And actually, I still am looking for one that I really, really like. Um, salt, we already talked about that. Um, nuts. The nuts really do add a great crunch to this. But if you can't do nuts, you could do some ground flaxseed. If you can do oats, you could do some toasted oats. You simply want something that's crunchy. So flaxseed, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Toast them a little bit and chop them up. You simply want crunch. This doesn't have any other purpose in the recipe other than crunch factor. And then we've talked about protein. Um, shredded coconut, but I have clients that can't do coconut, so you could, again, here you could do even some grated carrots, or you could do some oats. Again, you want something with a little bit of texture. Cinnamon, but you know, you could vary that. You could do an apple pie spice. You could do a pumpkin sp pie spice. You could do a chai tea seasoning. This is all about the flavor. And of course, our fat. So lots of options, lots of ways to create a muffin that can be dessert, it can be breakfast, it can be a snack. Freeze two at a time in, in little containers and pull it out and it's ready when you're ready to eat. I'm Cheryl Townsley helping you to learn how to have fun in the kitchen, let food be easy, and thoroughly enjoy the food that your body loves. Check out our recipes at CherylTownsley.com.